So we're going to talk about the phases of migration, some of the similarities and differences uh, between the old and new APIs that affect migration, and we'll give you some sample plans of migration for that are, have been used by other customers. So in terms of phases, as I mentioned at the beginning, the beta is, we've been in beta for about a year. And um, your experience is going to be different than other customers who've migrated because you're going to have to make some important choices about what are the services you want to migrate first, but also how you want to refactor as you're doing migration. So let's talk about, uh, first of all, in this session, we're going to talk about how to plan for your migration and a scope for it. And in the last session this afternoon that NAC is going to be doing, we're going to be going more into the technical depth about specific services and specific changes. So in the first step about familiarizing and planning, you're really doing that today. And that you're getting familiar with the documentation, you're understanding the t technology differences, and you're making your first call. So by the end of today, I'm hoping that everybody in this room will have effectively completed this first step in migration. Uh, where is the documentation? Uh, now, about the documentation, it's interesting. We've done some user studies, and pretty consistently, if you're experienced with the old API, you want to start coding right away. And you say, oh, I know all these concepts. I know how to use the odd words. I've been using it for a number of years. And you want to start writing code. And from our usability studies, that's really not the most effective way to do it. It's much more effective if you understand some of the concepts beforehand, understand especially the um, some of the troubleshooting areas and the migration areas. So, you know, it's uh, I'm not sure if you're one of those weird people like me who likes to read the documentation before you start using something you just bought. Um, but we do recommend in this case that you spend some time getting familiar with it, especially about the migration concepts. So we mentioned this a couple of times already that the uh, authentication credentials are the same. Um, the only difference is this login customer ID that we just talked about. And um, this came up in one of the questions, so it kind of precluded this, is that there's really a single view of reality here, irrespective of whatever mechanism you use to make changes to your ads accounts, they're going to be reflected in all the other places. So that's hugely beneficial. We're not migrating databases, we're migrating interfaces here. So some of the key differences. Well, the first obvious difference is the query languages are very different. So we've gone through that a couple of times already. The field names are different. So in the AdWords API, there are separate field names. Here, the field names are nested. So you'd have, so let's say, uh, ad group dot whatever. In terms of retrieving values, there are a bunch of different services in the AdWords API for retrieving values. Here, there's really the, uh, the Google Ad service. And the Google Ad service is the best way to retrieve values. While there are APIs for each of the individual resources, and you can do a get, the get is really not the way to do that because you're only going to be, it's really limited in terms of performance. You really want to use the, um, the, the ad service and make regular queries events that, and that way you can go service by service, or you can make more broader requests. In terms of reporting, uh, how many people here are reporting only users? So there, there's a there's a category of of uh, that's reporting only. Okay, well, uh, for um, for the reports that you are already doing, the uh, there are separate services for uh, for separate reports, like the uh, Click Performance Report, for example. There are no more separate reports in the new API. It's only through the the single query language and the single ad service that you get all your data back. So that should simplify things. But in terms of migration, if you have a whole bunch of different reports, they are, are going to be merged into one way of doing things. So right now on our website, we, we don't have a lot of examples on how to take the popular reports and migrate them. But we did do a detailed analysis. And it turns out about six of the reports represent 90% of all the report usage. So we'll be providing examples of those most common reports on and how to do the exact equivalent in different languages. And I believe you had a question over here. So the report types you think the campaign and certain types, or you have to like pick one report type? Yeah, so there, there's even no separate notion of reports in the new API. There isn't a report service. So I just uh, read one of the columns. 
you just read whatever metric data you want and whatever attribute data you want. So there's, there is no notion of reports anymore. It's not a distinct uh, identi entity. So uh, on the website, we do have a very detailed list of report mappings. And it goes in excruciating detail about what were the old fields and what were the new fields. And we're going to only continue to el elaborate that reference type information into more pedagogical information that you could use to say, these are the reports I use, and just give me the code on how I can do this. So if you have particular ones that you are most critical to you, uh, let us know about that, and we'll try and prioritize those. Do you have some sort of documentation for which fields are compatible or so when you say fields, do you mean the uh, mutatable, mutable fields or the reporting fields? So that's already on the website at the previous link. So if you go here and um, you bring up that, that link to migration reports, it goes through all that detail already. And it was um, a lot of effort to, to put that together. Uh, so it's, it's there now, but it's really more of a reference form. It's not very pedagogical, so, uh, but it's there. So using the sample code, we have about uh, 30, uh, about over 30 examples per client library today. In the AdWords API, we had 90 examples. So we don't have sample parity yet between the two APIs. Uh, there is a question of whether we're going to have full sample parity. And the reason for that is that the samples, if you use them, tend to be very uh, narrow. They tend to show how to use one very specific thing in one very specific service. And we're going to try and prov provide more uh, generalized samples. So one of the samples we'll be seeing uh, probably, uh, I'm hope to have it, we hope to have it out by the end of uh, March. It might be the beginning of April, is to walk you through a migration through the five separate stages. So if you've used like the batch job service and you create a uh, a budget and a campaign and ad and and keywords, it shows you how to take it from a pure AdWords API version of that and migrate each of those services separately into the new ads API. And then uh, by the end, after five steps, it's completely in the new ads API. So that's that's really what we're encouraging you to do is to migrate piece by piece. So that's the first of other samples like that. If there are particular samples you'd want to see or particular scenarios you'd like to see, that would be great feedback to help drive what other things that we'd uh, produce for you. Um, and this, in this afternoon session, we'll go through one of these samples. And the idea is that you go back to your offices afterwards and you go through some of the other samples to get familiar with it. So the second phase is after you've done your initial understanding and your initial actually getting it working, is to scope a detailed plan. And for that, what, what's worked with other customers is to do a proof of concept. Now, the main reason for the proof of concept is not just to try out the API in a more detailed way, but it's to understand what areas you need to refactor in terms of your application. So we've talked about transactions as being important. That's probably going to require some refactoring on the part of your application. We've talked about reports being different, and that's going to require some refactoring. Another aspect that we haven't yet talked about, which we'll discuss this afternoon, is that when you get values back in a report, those are all mutable. So when you use the AdWords API previously, you'd get back results and you, you, um, from a report, and you couldn't do anything with those results. Now when you get back results, you could say, oh, I got back these attributes and metrics. I want to set the field mask, just change this attribute, and then send it back up. So those things are all things that are aspects where you have to decide, do you want to do a small amount of refactoring or more significant refactoring to take advantage of these things. Now, on the, uh, on the website, we also have a, a fairly detailed article about why you should not be doing some kind of shim. You may think, oh, well, I have all this existing code. I just want to build a translation layer between the old API and new API, so I don't have to change all these different places in my code. And that has proven to not be a good idea. And we go through in detail in the migration section about why we think building a shim layer is a is really a, a suboptimal way of doing it, and ultimately will cost you more than doing a more a native migration.
So uh, in terms of the planning in detail, uh, during the second phase, what we think works well is to identify what are the dependencies of your different services. How do you want to break apart your application to say, this service I can move easily now and kind of get started and start using that in production. And then when I start getting to more of the core pieces of my application, how do I want to figure out uh, what are the dependencies and what are the sequence of the migration? And the idea here is that you are doing it part by part and you're not doing a, a wholesale monolithic migration. We think that that's really the, the safest way to do it, and we've purposely designed it so that you could do this kind of incremental migration and that it doesn't require a, um, a one day of switching everything over from the old API to the new API, but over time you're gonna migrate uh, piece by piece. Are there any questions about that? Do you think that's a reasonable way to do it, or do you plan on doing it more monolithically? Any thoughts either way? Makes sense to do it piece by piece, yeah? Anybody see any risks of doing it piece by piece? Anything that, any concerns they have about doing a, an incremental migration? Okay. Um, well, again, if this is something we'd love to discuss with you, and during the break or any of the other sessions, it would be if you want to uh, to go through this a little bit more in depth and explore some ideas with us, we'd be happy to to talk about that. So this is an example of a reporting only migration. It doesn't sound like there's anybody in this room who's reporting only, but uh, this will roll into the next slide. So here's an example of that there uh, of a uh, moving about 15 reports over. So some of the reports are, or some of the views, to be, to be clear, the report being an AdWords term and a view being more of an ads API term, are, are um, semantically the same. So there's a very close similarity, but some things have moved around and they're not in the same place. So some of the metrics that you thought were in one place are not, in this, are, are not there anymore. And some things have been broken apart. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to make this a better architecture for the next 10 years. So some things that were had baggage because of where they were kind of thrown in, we've cleaned up and, and fixed up. So reports that are semantically the same, we think will take about two days of developer time per report. The ones that are semantically different uh, will take about three days just to find where things are. And we're gonna try and mitigate that by better samples and by better documentation, but it's still gonna take time to figure out oh, this thing was there, but now it's no longer there, it's in this other place, or this thing was split into two places, or this thing was combined in, from two different places into one place. So things have moved around. Looking at a full service provider, so the bottom line is kind of rolling in from the previous one where it's about 100 days for developer days for reporting migration. This is how, we, how other customers have broken out their migration for the full service piece. And in their case, they've split apart what is the upwards migration, in other, uh, the, what was the upload versus the download, what is the sync of t pulling information from the Google Ads API to your local application, and then doing the mutates back from your local application to the uh, Google Ads API. Now, there's obviously some overhead of running both concurrently. There's time you have to, add in for testing, there's time you uh, have to add in for refactoring. And the refactoring, that second to last line here, is probably the has the highest variance in the room in the sense of your individual choices are going to depend on how much you want to do work up front to move to the migration now with refactoring the application and how much you want to do down the road. So do you want to start now and make it pretty close and not maybe take advantage of some of the at atomicity or some of the other features that we have in the new API, but then plan to refactor over time, or you want to go more full bore and take advantage of, of the, some of these things uh, today. So that these are just general guidelines. It's just kind of one perspective, but it gives an order of magnitude. So it's somewhere around 700, um, maybe a thousand developer days is what we estimate to do the migration for a full service provider. Some customers have come back with 1500 days because they want to do a much more extensive refactoring or they're being much more conservative in their estimates. Uh, but that 
that varies. The ballpark we generally see is about a thousand developer days for the complete migration. So is that a, a, a big number? Is that a shocking number? Is that a reasonable number? Yeah. I have one engineer. You have one engineer. <laughs> um, so you're well, <laughs> well, we're not intending you to do that, obviously. Um, so what I would do if you have limited resources is that you start developing new stuff with the new API now. And then as you grow and as you advance, you migrate over to the uh, migrate over. So, uh, so you start any new features you add, you build them using new API. So you won't have a migration problem. And then you look back and figure out and you gain experience with new API. And then you figure out how you're going to migrate the old code over. So, you know, if you have one engineer, one engineer, they probably haven't spent a huge amount of time building this so far, and it may be easier and to to migrate. And the other thing is that you have certain efficiencies with one person because there's less coordination, there's less you know um, uh, debate and dialogue about how to do things. So I know in my own experience, when writing code solo, it's probably a, a significantly faster than writing in a team, but you don't have necessarily a difference of opinions and maybe a broader scope to it. So you know, we're trying to mitigate it. We're trying to give you realistic expectations. We obviously don't want to put you out of business doing this. We're trying to get you to plan ahead early for it. And um, if there are specific ways we can help accelerate it by better samples, better documentation, please let us know and we'll, and we'll try and help out with that. And you know this is this is ballpark for a very complicated full service provider. It may be that other people are able to migrate in significantly less time than that if they know their code base very well and they're you know working solo or a small team. So is this? Uh, are there other reactions to this? Is this like much less than you expected? Much more than you expected? About what you expected? <laughs> okay, you have to. Okay. All right. I, I think you'll only get a sense of it when you start doing that first proof of concept and start playing with it. This may be conservative compared to, uh, you know, it's it's, main, it's not necessarily linear, right? As you start using the API, initially there's this learning curve, and then as you get more familiar with it, things are going to go faster and faster. So, and you may not decide to put how much time into testing, for example. You may not time, you may have much lower overhead to run API both APIs concurrently. So this is just a kind of a general ballpark. And again, your your mileage is definitely going to vary. Okay. That was a great discussion. <laughs> the last portion is about code. And this is where you've done this planning. You've started to figure out the dependencies. And now you're starting to actually go much more in a coding phase and moving things service by service. And that's going to be covered in that session this afternoon. The important thing here is that to ease this migration, you should be using both APIs concurrently. And, uh, and you should be able to do this in a fairly smooth way rather than this uh, kind of a violent, aggressive way of making wholesale changes one, uh, one after the other. So in summary, so step one is today. Familiarize and plan. Make your first call. When you go back is to scope this out, do it more in depth, do a proof of concept, decide how you're going to how much effort you're going to put into refactoring, decide how you're going to break up this migration into what services make sense for your specific needs, and then repeat that n times so that you're migrating service by service and that you can maintain stability and that you can um, adequately address the time to uh, in the migration period. In terms of resources, uh, this is the usual resource slide. We've highlighted a couple of things that are specific to, uh, to migration here. <laughs>